Okay, guys. So here we are. We are in the closing stages of the designing this baby Core XY 3D printer. And I sort of have one final part I need to design, at least one which is kind of necessary at right now. I, I mean, there will probably be more parts, but um, this is for cable management. And as you can see, I do have this guy attached to the X carrier, which is sort of the connection point for all wires going to the X carrier. So I'm gonna have a cable loom uh, going from this guy over to this corner and we need to make sure Hello, Thomas Great to have you here. We need to make sure that our cable loom is not restricting any belt paths or um, Yeah um, Any travel movements So that's always a challenge and also we did not want it to go like far beyond uh, on the outside. I don't want it to build like huge uh, on the back here. If this, if we call this the back where the extruder is, we could like build outside at least the same amount as the extruder. But remember, we also are going to keep our uh, filament roll hanging on the back uh, extrusion here so there's not so much space and um, we also need it to be pretty so <laughs> that's uh, you know pretty and convenient are not always matching together so um, yeah but anyway I figured out rather than placing it outside here because then we will have some we could see some interference with the belts because the belts, the upper belt, will come out here. And then when uh, this cable loom will bend, it might, you know, touch uh, our belts. We don't want that. So rather than having it outside, uh, um, then I will try. I'll try to make like a corner bracket here. So that's what I'm going to do now today. Um, I'm gonna exchange this guy, this 2028 corner bracket, with a printed part, which is kind of similar to this, which can catch our cable loom on the other side, and then we can run the cables down inside uh, along this extrusion, which is also one of the reasons why I chose to add the corner extrusions. I wanted I wanted, um, yeah, to, it much more easy to add the, these corner braces, the the panels on the side, on the rear, everything much easier when we have these extrusions, and it's not a big cost. So um, let's let's just get started uh, designing this, and I will try to. Like, <laughs> it's not easy to do this stuff live, but anyway. You know, so of course, uh, ask some questions. We are eight viewers at the moment, and uh, that's great. Great to see you guys. Uh, I do this anyway, so I can I can share my thoughts while uh, you are uh, watching, and uh, maybe maybe we can learn something, all of us. And you can you can give me some hints in what's uh, smart and what's not, and so on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start a new component because I'm gonna design this component uh, directly into the top assembly here. And then I'm gonna move it outside later. I'm gonna export it and import it again. So I'm just gonna start a new component. I'm just gonna call it a random uh, thing uh, like uh, K boom buddy. It's nice, and we need one of those, so I'm just going to do like a suffix 1x, as per normal. And as you can see, um, the whole assembly now get dimmed. Uh, so, but we need uh, something to draw on, and I'm going to make a plane. So I'm just going to do a construction plane on top of 
our current uh, corner bracket and uh, just uh, start drawing on that so i'm just gonna uh, then pick the new plane and do create sketch then we can see the printer from from the top like this and i'm just gonna start off with a rectangle uh, i i sort of know the dimensions here we can just draw up 28 by 28 so we have the dimensions because that's kind of our limit we don't want to go outside 28 by 28 and at this point i can drag this rectangle around so i want to fixate it uh, and i don't want to fixate it to the actual uh, frame or something i want to just uh, make some dimensions from let's say yeah this corner to uh, my center point here and uh, just let's say 13 that was maybe we can just eyeball it it's supposed to be 14 maybe yeah and do the same over here so 14 14 that's fine then we have uh, our like base sketch for something and I also I I need to measure of course my cable loom this is what I'm using I'm gonna show you guys uh, let me bring uh, over my other screen so you can see better so this is something I've been happy to use uh, use on the weekends and it also have some tension so we don't need like lots of stuff inside to keep this upright i only have a ptfa tube now running on the baby uh, inside this together with some patch cables some ether ethernet cables and it's it's just fine as is just keeping upright and it bends very nice so um I can try to link to the to that one later. It's on if you go to the Viking Wiki, I think there's a link to this guy. So we can maybe catch something similar to this. Um of course we need to measure. I think we are looking at about 20 yeah, 23 mm outside and about 20 inside. And I'm not sure at this point, I don't know if I'm going to put it inside something or outside something. So let's just get started uh, doing a circle. So I'm just going to hit C on the keyboard and do a circle. And I, and I don't want to attach the circle to anything. So I'm just going to draw it out here and let's do just 20 to start with. And, and let's work with 20 to C. Because, um, um, yeah, if we are going to, I'm probably, my first try is gonna be, you don't see my screen now, I'm sorry, let me change again, I'm probably gonna try to have this cable loom outside the cable loom body which means we need the outer diameter uh, of this guy to be yeah I'm looking at about 20 21 22 at the maximum I think let's first of all let's draw a diagonal here and uh, have a look see on how that goes so if we connect this is not easy you see but of course we can change it a little bit um, also we must think about our inner diameter because we need we need all our cables to run through and we also need 
I'm sort of rambling right now because I'm thinking very hard of what to, how to do this, uh, thinking ahead, and that's not always very so easy. Uh, I think I'm first now. I just want to draw like my inside walls, so I have those in place. So this is gonna be, you know, my bracket. I want my bracket to be at least uh, three millimeter, but I'm I'm gonna start off with four millimeter thickness. For the walls, which is what I use uh, on on uh, all my parts, uh, basically. If if it's like uh, a structural part, I uh, usually go with four millimeter. Hello, Sean. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to do live streaming now. Um, thanks for joining the party. So. This circle, now I attach this circle to my diagonal. I, I, I can see already I need to move it. I want to do that by removing a constraint. And it's this guy, I don't know if you can see it on the screen. But I just delete that guy and, and uh, just move my circle outside. Um, yeah, and uh, let's have a look at our other, before before we move on, let's have a look at our cable loom body as is here. Because we are trying to make the similar type. And this guy is 21 millimeter outside, so let's just work with that, that's much easier. I need to activate my new component again and go into sketches, find the sketch and open that one. So let's just do 21 and we want this 21 to be of course close to our uh, walls. So I'm going to do a tangent constraint between the circle and the wall on both of my walls like this. And then I'm gonna make my diagonal a construction line. Then we have something we're working with. And I want to make an offset here now. So I'm gonna make an offset by hitting O on the keyboard and uh, picking my uh, circle and make it two millimeter. Uh, for this wall, I'm gonna use two millimeter, which is okay for, for uh, those kind of uh, walls. And okay, and we can start. We can start now uh, extruding stuff. So let's hit E on the keyboard. Somehow. Oh, sorry. Um, now something very strange is happening. Okay. I don't know. Was some weird stuff was going on. So hit E again pick our wall and we know that we are going down 20 because that's the 2020 extrusions and I'm gonna re you know um, uh, um, turn off the bulb the bulb on the sketch so we can see the sketch again and sort of locked my my fusion sort of locked now very strange now now it's better I think and um, at this point, I'm not sure. I think we also need to think about we need it's it's supposed to be a printable solution, so we don't want to do a lot of supports, which is always tricky. So at the moment, I can already see that we are getting a way too many too much support by the way i was thinking of doing doing this because if we do go down four down four this way then we have something going on um we can attach uh, this guy to the frame but <laughs> yeah <laughs> we still need the cable loom guy to come up and uh, you will understand what I'm talking about if I do like this. If I go, let's say, 
four down and uh, it's gonna be like 23 or something upwards if I do like this we have some issues this guy will not be easily printed <laughs> so we cannot work with that that, that that's not a good idea um, so I might already change my view on this so this is what's happening this is what happens uh, let me talk to you a little bit so this is what happens when you start designing stuff and you don't have a clear vision on on how it's gonna end up or you have a vision of what the parts are gonna look like but uh, you don't really know uh, how to attack it because you don't have all the surroundings in your head you just have a vision of the part in your head but then there's all this other stuff around it which is the printer itself and how it the part attaches to the frame and so on so uh, we need to rethink how we are going to do this and we might of course just have a hole we could if i just change my extrusion here and let this guy go down like this but then we you, then you can see we have conflicts with the the, the um, fasteners the m5s and that, that's also one thing that you you don't usually think about is okay what kind of fasteners do we have uh, how long are they how big are the heads and so on and that's what we are looking at right now so um, we <laughs> have some issues already and i was thinking that uh, this was supposed to be <laughs> this was supposed to be a, a easy task and i know i forgot to change screen i saw about that now we are back in fusion again and um yeah <laughs> so this is not easy um i'm not sure what to do here really huh we could do something like this and just put our uh, cable loom inside the hole straight down the like that and uh, have some sort of uh, attachment point let me try one thing let me go into the sketch again so let's open up the sketch and i want uh, to use my diagonal so i'm gonna make that a real line not a construction line and finish my sketch thank you sean uh gluing and uh, is i i'm i'm not a big fan of gluing stuff together for like functional parts like this it's i think it's okay to glue stuff just for uh, mock-ups and so on but for functional parts uh, that's gonna be like over time and also for others for other people to print them that's you know this is not not just for me I, I can sort of control my own gluing but I cannot control other people's gluing so I will try to make one piece or we can make two pieces and we can use screws but gluing I'm not a big fan of because of it, it's not easily controlled uh, so let's just try and see what what if we I'm gonna remove my profile and take just the half of it and make one side and then let's go down like this you know we can have a look see inside and see how this if we crash we don't crash with the fasteners but eh, <laughs> it's still difficult to, to get to them so we need to, to like attach these fasteners we need to screw them in place and we cannot do that with this wall um 
we could. <laughs> oh man, I'm 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 uh, painted myself into a corner here. Uh, this is not easy. Uh, so let me take a look at this guy, like in in isolation mode, so we don't see the printer. It's it, sometimes it's easier to see it like this. And also have a look in the chat. Uh, tube can squeeze into square. Yeah. Pressure fit, yeah. Yeah. And also, this, you know, this cable loom would not be the same for everyone because it's not like a standardized part. Um, let me just fix something here. I'm gonna grab these guys as well and have have it like this. So this is very very strange what I'm gonna do. Let me add some chamfers. So that's gonna be like three and three because this guy we can print if if we have it like this. Um. Of course, and then we can just fill it. Maybe we can fill it this guy. Uh, something like this. Uh, I will do. I will do detailing later. But we need to get something going here. Um, of course, we can make holes here for our fasteners, and usually make the holes for the M5. I usually make uh, 5.5. As it normally would be if you do clearance in Fusion, if you choose clearance in the whole tool and um, choose M5 in the drop down, you will actually get the 5.5 uh, diameter hole, which is good for uh, at least for um, vertically printed holes like these would be now, because if we do print it like this. Then these guys will pre uh, not need any bore, any drill, any uh, you know uh, post processing. So I think you know we could work with something like this and just stick the cable loom inside. But how do we fixate it? Because we need. We need to fixate it some, uh, you know, using a uh, cable tie or something. I'm really out of uh, good ideas right now. Let me unisolate isolate this guy, and let's have a look. So, let me remove this one. So it's better to understand what's going on here. So this is sort of this is kind of nice. We can we can hook we we can tighten our bolts our screws that we can tighten and we can print it easily. Uh, we can um, I I think this can work. This is a very simple solution and. Um, at the moment, I don't see much other solutions for this to work, except maybe doing it in two parts. If we do it in two parts, then we can get something like this. Because then we will have the tube sort of in one part, and then our corner in another part. And that's certainly it's an option, but then we need more hardware because I don't, as I as I said, I I don't really want to 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 have gluing as an option for for um, everyone to use. But um, yeah, what do you think? Should we make uh, this guy in two parts and add the two more M3s for it to to fit? 
could be. We, we can have a look see and see. I, I can design one part more and see. But first of all, I want to send this guy to the printer. I want to print this part now because I want to try it on the machine and see how it will work. That's the, like the only way to actually find out. And uh, this is now because this hole needs to be bigger. Uh, it needs to be a lot bigger for this cable loom to fit inside. We can of course squeeze this quite a bit, but I don't want to squeeze it too much. So I think we need it to be 22. 22 is about as uh, much squeeze I want to give it. So let us go back to the drawing. So here it is. And uh, yeah, we are 21. If we make that 22. And uh, actually, we would need to make this 24 then. It's starting to get big then. Uh, that's, that's not really a big deal because we are still inside. We are inside our frame. So let me just have a look in the chat and see. The tube thing downwards, yes, we, we we have been talking about that, but you see that we have some fasteners here that we need to get to. And uh, that's why this tube is, is uh, sort of um, a problem for us. And uh, I just want to make some chamfers here now. Um, these guys, I'm going to do four in chamfer over there. and. Um, I think my fillet here is too wild. It's gonna be like this. So I just wanna send this to the printer now, uh, print uh, out a part real quick and just have a look, see. And then I'm gonna make one more concept with, uh, with two parts and then we can just uh, test it and see. So what are you guys saying? Friction, friction fit, yeah, that could... Uh, we could actually make threads. We could make one part with male threads and one part with female threads, printed threads. Uh, but uh, yeah. How long will they last? You know, uh, <laughs> so many questions <laughs> and uh, too few answers. Uh, I'm not sure, Sean, about uh, getting to this. Um, we might get to our fasteners from the top here. But we also need to insert, you know, we need to insert these guys. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let me send it to Cura anyway. Um, I'm gonna go to tools make and uh, just, yeah, we can send it to mesh mixer first so we can see how I work in mesh mixer as well. Bring mesh mixer to the screen. And uh, our part is <laughs> typically out of sight, so we need to go recenter view. And here it is. So I'm now inside some kind of maker bot. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna turn this guy around. So I'm gonna go to edit and transform. And I'm gonna pick this one. I'm, and I'm gonna drag my mouse out to uh, hit these. Uh, guides and then I'm just gonna flip it around like 180 like that and accept it and then I'm gonna do a line and accept again so now it's on the bed like it should print and then I can export it to somewhere uh, let's do uh, 
the Sun library, STL library, and call it uh, cable, <laughs> cable uh, loom uh, corner body. One X support no uh, brim no and go to Cura. Mm. Threaded tubes, yeah. Uh, okay, so here we are in Cura. This is Cura 4.2.1, by the way. And uh, just go open. So now it's already aligned, ready to go. And the go to print setting is gonna do PLA. I'm gonna do 0.3 layers, which I did have. <laughs> and I'm gonna do three wall lines. I'm gonna do, yeah, four top layers, I guess. Yeah, for a little bit strings, uh, not too big. Uh, we are going to throw this apart away, so it's not important. Uh, I'm going to always do connect infill lines when I do structural parts. Uh, and I'm going to do go to zero. Somehow build volume temperature turned up in Cura, which was not there before. And I need to turn it off by setting it to zero. Don't I have a profile for this? Yeah, I have PLA 300. <laughs> okay, so let's use that one. And uh, yeah. Seems good. Should print uh, 30 minutes, that's fine. And always, when you do slice for something, do a preview just to have a look at the part also inside to see if there, if there is any conflicts or anything going on and how the walls are printing and so on. Uh, so this uh, looks okay. I'm, I'm doing a skirt just to, to prime my nozzle a little bit. And I'm gonna send this to the king. This is our printing with duet, so I'm just sending it directly from Cura. And we can bring in the the duet uh, the interface DVC. So now you can see I'm heating uh, first layer to 75 degrees as uh, it's cold now. So we need to I need to like overheat it for for uh, my first layer uh, unless it will be like yeah hot on the bottom and then cold on the top. And uh, we want I want it to be more uh, yeah thoroughly heated and then second layer I'm going to 65 so what are you guys saying in the chat <laughs> welcome uh, to the chat by the way um, I, I'm sorry I can't read all your comments but I'm trying to get most of them while we are heating I'm also going to bring in my camera view so we can watch everything going smooth because we don't have anything on the build plate uh, <laughs> sometimes i start a new print and there's all <laughs> already something there i forgot to take off and we have a crash uh that's not so funny <laughs> okay so let me see if you have any good ideas here uh, make the threaded tube uh, you are right about inserting of the screws big tube Going down, yeah. Mm, Baxter, um, I'm not sure I understand you correctly, but I might. Screw holes into slots. Oh yeah, like that. Um, yeah, kind of. We can do them into slots. I agree about that, uh, Sean. We could, but you still need. We still need to get to the, <laughs> the screw heads to tighten them. 
because this is kind of a structural structural part so we can't really fool fool around um, So, but then again, we might be able to get to the, the, but it's only one way to find out how this actually works. And that will be 13 minutes from now. We are going to pull this off and we can test it on the printer. I don't know if you see the printer. It's behind me. Let me bring you to, um, so it's behind here. You can see, I can bring it over and we can have a look. Because I already, I already, of course, have something going on here. Um, as you can see, this this is the cable loom I'm talking about, and I'm really happy about this cable loom. So I really would like to go with this, so it moves very nicely. And uh, at this point, I have just some very quick prototyping going on on the back here but if you do see we do have uh, some conflict here with the belt which i was talking about earlier so that's why i want to uh, move it inside and it's a <laughs> quite tight fit if you see um yeah it's kind of tight uh, in this corner but <laughs> we do have some space to work with but I don't want to, to uh, affect the travel moves uh, too much. So, uh, we already uh, might have um, some issues with that. Um, at this point where I'm standing now and look, looking down into this corner, I might actually do two parts uh, because I do want this tube I'm talking about this tube here I want it to come up we, we I, th I think we just need it to come up so while the other guy is printing yeah it is printing uh, and I totally totally forgot to change my C offset because it's way off on this printer <laughs> so it's supposed to be like plus 25 or something uh, so that was uh, not good. So uh, can you hang around and I'll just see how it is going inside. Yeah, the print this is is actually working out quite well even though way too low um back to the chat and back to the design yes you guys have so, some uh, some good thoughts uh <laughs> yes, do a quick drawing, uh, <laughs> Baxter. <laughs> um, there's only so much uh, time I can use in the chat at, the t uh, at one one uh, time because I know others are, uh, you know, waiting for action here. <laughs> so, um, but of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to to answer you and uh, look at your su suggestions. I'm not sure which fillet you are talking about, uh, Sean. Uh, actually, fillets in 3D printing <laughs> parts are not working the same as in, let's say, uh, injection molded parts uh, or in uh, CNC machine parts. Uh, we don't have, we don't see the same. It doesn't, it doesn't feel the same need, uh, and and also fillets in. Uh, printed fillets in let's say the this way I would call it uh, vertically 
fillets, they do not print well. So we'd rather you use uh, chamfers uh, in the vertical direction rather than fillets because fillets will be printed layer by layer like this and that does not work very well. Uh, so anyway. Yeah, you can send some pictures on Discord. Uh, I am I am on Discord now here, so um, if you have something you want to show me, we can do it there for sure. I sort of feel like I missed something in the chat now, so um, yeah, you, yeah, draw draw ahead. I, I think I just have to start it, uh, on the bottom of the, of the chat. And then we can work from from there. Uh, there are some talks about some fillets now. I'm not sure where the fillet need to be. Uh, and we are talking about uh, Baxter is talking about something. Yeah, let's just see what Baxter is coming up with, and uh, let's print the part. Let's get uh, going on a two part uh, solution for this guy. And the fine thing about the fusion, if I now save my project. Uh, I can just call it whatever, you don't need to call it anything, but uh, let's just see one part. Then I can go back in time uh, later if I figure out that, hey, I don't want uh, the next one. So let's again go into our uh, component and I want to is isolate it now uh, because now I kind of have a view about how, how, how this guy looks uh, from the outside and I'm gonna go back in time my timeline and uh, I'm gonna use the same sketch basically we can use these these walls as well I can also start with this guy um, we could do it like this. I think I'm just gonna start with it like this. And um, then I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna leave it like that. And I'm gonna make this, uh, you know, this body I'm gonna call like my base corner or something doesn't matter really and now I'm gonna make a new I'm gonna make a new component inside this component so this is gonna be the loom body and I'm gonna draw that on top of this guy and that I want to do directly and I'm going to hit P for project I'm just going to pro uh, project the body edges like this and again I'm going to go with C for circle and uh, we are going to go 21 is going to be our outside and offset that one inside 2 millimeter. flip it like this I know there is some action going on in the chat now just let me sort of figure this guy out I, I think I have an idea now because we actually now can if I make this tangent to this guy And I can make it, um, let's just make a dimension from this corner and do it 14, which means in the center actually. And then I'm gonna make also uh, before, yeah. I want to do another circle out here. It's going to be a 3.5 millimeter circle. It's going to be for a screw. 
I'm not sure where to place this screw right now. It might be out here or out here. Let me have a look at the printer. A little bit hard to see. Uh, I think we just have to start with something. Let me make it on the diagonal, like make one helpline here, make that construction line, add this guy to this line, and then I want uh, I also need one, uh, uh, one circle outside this, which is uh, like seven. Because seven is like what the washers are for a three M three, and um, we can make that circle tangent to this circle. Let's just make this eight, so we have some distance, uh, and then let me connect something here. Let's just make a circle here and there and there and there. Not a circle, but an arc rather and make those tangent like there and there and there and there and then that one and this one and make those equally. So use the equal constraint on those guys and then hit D and make it let's say 10 or we can make it maybe 8. It's not a big deal. If you make it 8 we have like half the diameter. Or actually twice, uh, whatever. Um, it will be a little bit of rambling. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now let me just before you guys go crazy in the chat, let me um, because we need one more fixing point. But I'm thinking that my my second fixing point it's I, I would like that to be inside here. So let me wait, make one more 3.5 and uh, let's have C and seven and make that tangent to the inside. And then make the center point coincident on this line. And then have some uh, arcs from this guy to... I'll uh, just do some lines inside here, I think. Um, just hit uh, the shift key and then just drag it out like that. And I gene make this horizontal and also tangent to the sky. Something like this could be an option. And I'm going to show you what I'm thinking. Um, first of all, I'm going to extrude down. I'm going to pick all my inner profiles and just down into my, uh, my corner body like that and then i want to refresh you know my my now turn on the turn on the sketch again and make a new body first i'm going uh, three millimeter up or we can do two i think um something like this Oh, I totally did something wrong. Let me go back in time, guys. So let us extrude one more time. We, of course, cannot extrude away what we're gonna have as a fixing point. So now let's just do this one first and this is going to go up like 23 like that 
remove the the corner buddy and then we can extrude these guys like three millimeter up like that remove the sketch then we have one fixing point inside and we have one fixing point outside and then we are able to fix this guy to our corner buddy <laughs> we do have some conflicts here though uh, i don't want i don't want that to happen why do we have that so i need to investigate why that is yeah okay so to fix that let me fix that let me go, just go back uh, here and uh, find this guy and make that negative four we should make everything okay yeah something like that this is not an easy task guys um as I said, I painted myself into a corner. Uh, this is just the first drawings, you know, it will probably end up something else, but uh, we need to figure out how to solve this uh, stuff. And let me just make a fillet here as well. Let's do the seven. It kind of looks kind of strange where it's at right now. I think we might want to move it a little bit. So let's see if we can move this guy a little bit more inside if we can move it like over here maybe something like that would be nicer it would probably work like this then I can also make this guy a little bit bigger Ten. Something like that, and uh, then I need to remove some of my old stuff in the timeline. As you can see, there are some stuff in the timeline here now. Which we don't want. So I'm going to delete that guy. Uh, also, the chamfer went away. This hole we need, and that hole we need, and those chamfer we want. So it's basically almost the same actually uh, corner as we did have but it, it kind of different uh, hole and then we have another part like this so let me give some some colors to these guys because it's much more easy to, to actually visualize when we have uh, some uh, different colors so this is what it looks like now and then we have two parts and uh, then uh, two more screws and then i know there's a lot going on you probably sent me something baxter let me see streamer mode is enabled okay i don't know what that means i don't see anything on discord let me have a look in the chat Got to go, Baxter. Uh, okay. I don't actually got anything in Discord. Do you guys see anything on Discord? it posted in do you guys see the what the Baxter draw but anyway we need to get moving people are watching and uh, so this might actually be a better solution uh, we I'm also gonna make you know 
if we do have a look see on my top assembly and uh, let's just un unisolate this guy so this is what it looks like now and oh we must watch that we don't have conf belt conflicts uh, it actually looks like we are going clear because there there is a belt coming here and it should pass this guy without uh, you know touching so and of course this will not work i can see now that this <laughs> because our cable loom <laughs> of course need to be outside and there's no space here so i need to move it just a little bit and that we can do of course we can do that let me work with it so i need to remove my my tangent constraint here over here and i need to move this a little bit outside so i'm gonna do a dimension from this line and i'm gonna pick circle arc tangent and we need at least one millimeter one millimeter should be enough though so that's all fine and this this looks uh, just fine and um, so this could be it actually two parts what do you think thomas is this uh, something we can work with get the cable loom from this guy to that guy i mean it's only attached with two m3s that should be you no know, big deal should it what do you think what do you guys think i know there are 16 people <laughs> not a lot but uh, still uh, a lot uh, 16 people watching um what do you think about cable loom buddies uh this guy we can have our cable management going down inside here and down uh, along this extrusion Tom is saying uh, good looks nice Thomas is saying uh, seems good Tom is saying it looks nice Scott Scott welcome Scott nice to see you two parts seems fine says Scott and um, then because actually I think maybe our first part is finished yeah it's finished our first part is finished so I'm gonna leave you with the baby and I'm gonna pick up the first part we printed and then uh, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna print the other guys So here is the first part and uh, first of all we can have a look and see if it actually goes inside it's very very tight but it does go inside and um, I'm not sure if this might be too tight to fit my cables actually uh, it might work like this it is a solution and it's actually better than I thought it would be you know something like this and um, I mean I think I want to tr 
try both ways because this is actually better than I, I thought it would be. And this is a very simple solution because we only have this one part, which actually is a corner bracket. And um, I'm not sure though if, if all cables does fit, fit because it, it gets very tight inside here. Um, so that's uh, that's just something I need to figure out by actually attaching it and, and see. I'm not gonna do that while uh, you know live. Let me do all this detailing later. This is just uh, not live 3D modeling and uh, looking at the challenges when we do small stuff like this. <laughs> when you do, you know, print out parts from Thingiverse, you don't think about you know <laughs> all. All kinds of stuff going into actually designing stuff, uh, the, these kind of things. Uh, it's quite, quite, quite extensive. Uh, and I do want to print these guys as well. But first, I want to make this um, bulb, bulb, or I don't know what I would call this brim or whatever on the top, which actually works as um, like a fixing point. You don't see what I'm seeing now. I forget to change my screens, I'm sorry. So this is what I'm talking about. I, I want this guy to hold this one in place. Torben, welcome. Um, yeah. Right now, if we can, if we can uh, make this one piece work with enough space inside without squeezing our all our stuff, then I think we have a winner. But there, there it's only a, a space issue, really, more than anything else. And I might be able. I'm not sure if I can make the hole anything any bigger. Um, there are questions. Uh, anyway, let me make this brim I'm talking about. I'm making this like on the top here. I'm gonna show you how I do that. So to do that, I'm gonna isolate my cable loom body. I'm gonna activate it. And I'm also gonna activate my loom body because it's now like a component inside the app component. And I need uh, a plane to, to draw on uh, in the center of this guy. And uh, so first I'm gonna just do a axis. I'm gonna make a new axis. I'm just gonna hit the, the inside wall and then get a new axis and then, then I'm gonna do a construction plane angled on this guy. It doesn't matter what what angle we we are. And then I'm gonna do create sketch. And then I'm gonna go create and in intersect this guy, this body. We can do body or we can do, uh, let's do body. This I'm gonna slice it so we can see, and I'm gonna draw just like a triangle like this, and I'm gonna make it two millimeter here, and probably gonna make it like three here, and finish that one. And now we're gonna go uh, revolve this guy, and on axis you just select. Uh, you know, some circle or something. And we are gonna join it. So that's it. And I'm gonna hide this guy. And then go blend or fill it on this edge. And probably going to do, yeah, like one millimeter looks okay. So then this is ready to print. So that was quick. <laughs> this is how it's supposed to work all the time. <laughs> So yeah, not always so easy. And then uh, like go to tools, make, uh, send it to Mesh Mixer again, so you can have a look at Mesh Mixer. 
and it's all outside it we, our viewing area so i'm gonna recenter and uh, well it's basically <laughs> as it should be so i'm just gonna drop it down and do a line and accept and export to my SDL library. Um, something like that. And let's go to Cura and uh, import the new guy. Let's print the bracket as well uh, at the same time. So make, I don't remember what I'm calling stuff now. Um, I'm just gonna send it directly to Cura this time. It's uh, kind of quicker for me because I know how to align stuff. Not all knows how to align in Cura or like see what's normal uh, position of a part to print it in so that's why i'm not going to use time in on the weaking repository to to re-rotate all parts so there is no question about oh we forgot holes for our m3s but let, let's just drill them uh, i can make them while we are printing but let's just drill them on this guy So this is gonna what it's gonna print like, and of course we need this one as well. And it's gonna take twenty five minutes, so we are probably not gonna not gonna be here for those as we are going to wrap up this. Uh, in like uh, yeah not too long I'm gonna have a little bit of chat with you guys and then we can like wrap it up and um, yeah I can also answer some questions we can have a look at the 3d model and uh, whatever you want to, to do we can do if you have any questions about fusion so doing stuff in fusion or uh, anything about the the baby core XY. I'm still not sure about what I'm gonna call <laughs> the the baby printer. Um, struggling with the name dropping here. This should be okay. Do we have some conflicts here now? We probably I probably made some conflicts again <laughs> by adding the brim part. Uh, it seems to go wall in wall or uh, it's hard to see i think it's actually just clear um <laughs> yeah that that's how it is when you are um, working with the tight tolerances okay in the chat Just we baby, <laughs> says Thomas. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is that, I mean, this printer is so scalable. So calling it just like we baby is sort of, I don't know. Um, is it still a baby, a wee baby, if it's like 300 by 300? I don't know. I'm thinking about adding adding some choices in the bill of materials or on on the store at maker supplies we can add uh, we can have small medium large extra large maybe at least maybe three sizes like small for the 200 like medium for a 250 and then maybe a large for a 300 what do you think about that having some options for people to choose from in in size wise <laughs> Thomas, is, yeah, yours are uh, like tall baby. It's a tea baby, not a wee baby. <laughs> we scale. <laughs> Babies also grow up. <laughs> that's yeah, that's true. Uh, Scott. Um, 
babies do, do, do grow up. I'm, I'm thinking though that uh, my name, uh, I suggested Draupner, is a little bit maybe too hard. Uh, it's a little bit too hard to pronounce. It's not like uh, <laughs> a name that people uh, recognize. So, yeah. <laughs> we kinder. <laughs> yeah, and also I can show you guys uh, my solution for the BL Touch because, of course, also the BL Touch is a big uh, kind of uh, travel stealer. <laughs> There's no place to fit it, but I managed sort of to find one place where it doesn't take too much space, and that's about here. Uh, and in this case, it attaches to the hot hand. And the good thing about attaching the BL Touch to the hot hand is that it will always be in the right height with your hot hand. Uh, the negative thing about attaching it to the hot hand is that you need to deassemble it when you change your hot hand. If you change this guy, you know this is an interchange this is like modular so either you need more probes and they are kind of expensive so you need one probe for each or you need to like uh, take these off each time you change your m module that's not maybe not a big deal but there are always something to think about and i think we also lose maybe some millimeter of travel let us drag it over and see hi matthew you are late to the party I think there's something wrong going on now in the print. Oh, I sort of printing on the queen. That was not, not my, I'm supposed to print on the king, not on the queen. So that's my bad. So we need to print on the king. That's easy to do that mistake. Should be like different colors or something. It'll be easier to see. So I need to close my. <laughs> I need to stop the queen from printing in the air. <laughs> okay. So, what are you guys saying? Um, yeah, Scott, I was, I was thinking about that, Scott, uh, placing it on the side here. But the thing is that this, this bracket is not uh, very rigid. And it will probably also bring some... Um, uh, might bring some vibrations from this fan over to this bracket. And off to the BL Touch. That's also something we need to think about, you know, where to, when we're placing stuff, how flexible stuff is, uh, what's going on, uh, because we don't want the BL Touch to be affected by vibrations. And by placing it like this, we don't have much, so much vibrations anyway. At least it, it has to go to thicker parts, you know, if there are vibrations in this fan, at least we have a radial, um, uh, not a radial, we have a, a blower, so um, it has to go through th this part and this part in PETG will uh, take up some of the vibrations going down into the black part here and over to this guy. So I think our vibrations out here will be less than over on this side. But that was one option we had, I agree. 
Uh, so okay. I'm trying to move move my hot end uh, around, but it's uh, fusion. It's kind of uh, not wanting uh, to follow my leads, so uh, I just have to leave it with that. But I think you you uh, you understand what I'm talking about, uh, Scott. Yeah, but the thing is, Scott, if you do have it not related to the printhead, what are you going to do if you, let's say, switch from a V6 to another type of hot end? It might even just switch from a normal hot uh, V6 to a, a volcano. Then suddenly you cannot use your C offset anymore. You need to re... Uh, mount you need to lower your uh, your probe you cannot use your probe with a volcano as you used with a v6 because uh, the nozzle on a volcano will be way down here and that's what's nice by attaching it as this because then we can just adjust we can have like uh, brackets for all kinds of hot ends it could be a mosquito hot end it could be uh, yeah, something else and we, s we still have the r always the right height for the probe so that's a very very nice you know uh, reason to have it like this good evening gessner and uh, it should be okay. Uh, you have a valid question about the BL touch being too close, but it actually, <laughs> I think it's actually even closer on the Viking. Um, I try to. We have some space here. It sh it should be okay where it's at. Uh, I know there are some. Um, I don't remember how far we are away now, but I, I think actually. You know, I'm, I'm going to review that more closely. Uh, we could, we don't have much to work with. Uh, I don't want it too far from the hot end, of course, because it should be as close to the nozzle as possible. You know, this uh, this guy should be as close to the nozzle as possible. But then again, we don't want it too close to the hot zone. Uh, but yeah, it's probably nicer. I mean, these parts are in PETG and they uh, are fine where they are at and they melt much f quicker than this guy which is in something polycarbonate or something and it's not 3d printed it is uh, injection molded so it should be fine Now we're just kind of like having a, a chat about uh, different stuff here now. We've done some designing. I added this guy in the corner for the cable loom. Uh, we have uh, been through two, we have two different solutions. This is one of the solution. This is the second solution, which consists of two parts. And uh, it's a like a corner bracket. And then there's uh, this guy on top which uh, attach with the screws. And then we have uh, something I'm gonna show you on screen. I'm just recapping for some new people. I'm gonna show you on screen. So this is our cable loom. And then there's uh, this bracket, which is just a simple bracket with a hole in it. And uh, then we need to squeeze this guy and we need to squeeze this kind of a little bit too much more than I like but then again if if the hole is big enough then we have a very simple solution for you know our cable system going down in, inside the corner so I, I need to review those uh, solutions, those two solutions, and maybe I'll come up with something better, I don't know. Uh, at least let me try them, and I will make some posts about my selection uh, later. 
and uh, whatever. And uh, this is so sort of the final part I need for uh, for everything to because I'm working on cable management now. I'm not trying to be very patient doing my cable management, so it doesn't like uh, yeah. So it's very 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 clean. Uh, I'm not rushing anything at this point and then I'm gonna start firmware and then I'm gonna start printing a lot of stuff I'm gonna run it for every day like 10 hours a day I think um, printing stuff for at least one week and then review stuff and then tune stuff and uh, you know whatever and then we might look at some releasing stuff so yeah Hi, Master Steel. Hey. Yeah, you're late, but uh, it's been fun. It's been great having uh, you guys here. Uh, I did not expect uh, this turn up, but that's nice. And uh, it's not. It's been also a nice discussion about uh, different solutions and feedback on solutions and so on. And as you understand, you know. Um, there are always questions arising just designing simple parts like this. Uh, but I think we have two, two good uh, solutions now we can, we can uh, go further with. So... End stop flags, Scott. Scott, you're asking about end stop flags. Um, on the why, yes. <laughs> That's a good question, Scott. You are you are really paying attention. Uh, I have not added, you know, this is the end stop flag for my X, and I I must talk about you guys. Uh, now again, I forgot to trans transition to the my screen, so you need to tell me when I forget to transition. Uh, but we were very very lucky. This guy. I could already use my fixing point for this um, bracket for the optical end stop. I only needed to redraft this because it was a little bit too big, but now it's perfect. Uh, so I changed this just a little bit. This is now, yeah. But you can still work with the previous one, just like grind away a little bit of stuff here. Uh, so I just added also a hole here for that guy. And then this end stop flag, very simple solution. And then of course we need something on the Y. Uh, and I said that my, uh, my cable loom buddy should be the last part, but yeah, those will probably come later when you are not here uh, so some uh, minor stuff uh, left but uh, anyway the, that's i know how to so i know how to solve this guy this this came uh, and stop f for the y i know how to solve and for the c i'll figure something out uh, it's not a big deal i was more concerned about this uh, cable loom uh, stuff because having the cable management very clean and so on so yeah finding a good solution for that and um, the, uh, the, the gusner 3d gusner i also have some uh, good uh, points about turning the uh, the heater block 180 that's not possible i would of course do that if we could i can let me open uh, the x-axis sc so it's more easy for you to see of course you know uh, most of the, the questions you have i probably have answers for <laughs> but not all of them so please uh, please uh, ask uh, the thing is that we are too low uh, we cannot turn this guy because it conflicts with uh, the ref rest of our parts then it would crash in this guy and we need that guy 
So I'm sorry, that's not possible. And there's no other way to do this uh, as, uh, yeah, not now anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why our heater plug needs to be this way and only that way. I, I would really like it to be another way, but uh, maybe another hot end, another hot end. We don't have this heater block, but that's what I'm working with right now. Yeah. I have two duets running and uh, <laughs> to be honest I have uh, it's it's they have been bothering me a lot but uh, now I sort of uh, got the hang of using them but when you go from a Marlin controller to a du duet and you know Marlin if you know Marlin controllers very very well then the duet controllers they don't work like your Marlin, Marlin controller they they are like a different a totally different kind of uh, firmware so and for many people say that it's much simpler and it probably is but for me it was not so it took me a long time to to tune the, the, the duets and I'm still not perfectly happy with tuning uh, tuning it. Uh, the pressure advanced, I think it's really hassle to, to tune on a big, on a long bottom to a printer, but uh, at least now it's it's uh, working fine. So, and there's, there's lots of nice features with the duet. I mean, the controller is very nice. The board is just beautiful. Um, the firmware is a little bit, uh, yeah. I don't know, I'm not sure what I'm going to say. I think Imalin is much more well developed than the RepRap firmware. Uh, RepRap firmware is kind of like a development base, uh, not like a, 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 a it's, it's never final, it's never released, it's always a new release, you know, so yeah. But yeah, do it, do it it's nice, but expensive, yeah. <laughs> Of course, the fine thing about the Duet is we have in built-in Wi-Fi, so that's very nice to have. And uh, there are some more questions. Torque for x-axis. Uh, I'm not sure what you are uh, referring to Master Steel the torque have you investigated the torque which will be applied to the x-axis due to the hot end and fans on the side of the axis uh, yeah, I'm not, not really I'm not following you, I'm sorry. I'm not sure. The torque. We are pulling here, of course, our... our the belts are coming here. So those are pulling. The x-axis, the x-carrier. Oh, you're thinking, yeah, oh, uh, you're talking about, uh, I think you're, yeah. So you're thinking about there's more weight on like the, the lower side of the, of the screen now than on the, the upper side. Uh, so we will have some, um, I think we are talking about momentum. Um, we are pulling straight over like the wheels so we are pulling here and there and uh, here and there so every forces on the core xy is is uh, a non issue because uh, we pull and uh, push and pull like in the same um, yeah how do you say 
we pull here and we kind of push here. <laughs> the forces align, or what do you say? How do you say it in English? I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, there are more weights on this side of the x axis, of course. But anyway, the weight is not big. I'm not weighed, uh, weighed these parts, but uh, it's not like a huge amount of weight. And of course, if you have a direct drive, then this will be an issue, but not in the way that you are uh, worried about. It would be more an issue of a tilting movement rather than a torque issue. Like these guys, you know, if this gets too heavy, this whole thing, if this gets too heavy, then uh, we might see some, you know, uh, nodding, should I say. Uh, if we move around quickly, it might nod, nod a little bit. Uh, that, uh, that's not very nice. So we want to avoid that. But uh, uh, the movement in the x-axis, in the x-direction, would not be any problem for the, uh, like torque-wise. Not at all. I'm uh, like 99.9% uh, <laughs> on that. <laughs> yeah. So, looking at the chat, just looking at the chat, guys. Yeah, thank you, Gessner, for joining in. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this up now. I'm gonna look at my parts and uh, I'm gonna give you guys feedback. So uh, I think we are uh, think we are done. Uh, we've been here for quite some time now, uh, and it's been uh, very very nice to have you. And all the discussions very nice. Uh, always very happy to receive uh, your uh, feedback and to help me uh, design some nice stuff. So. Uh, Let's just get this baby up and running and uh, have it produce more <laughs> more babies. <laughs> That's not, maybe not good. Um, yeah, anyway. So um, thank you for watching guys and uh, have a nice day. I'll uh, catch you up in, in on Discord and uh, whatnot. <laughs>